Now, speaking about your other collaborations, um, Frontline just won an, a Polk Award on Friday for yes. your project right. that you did with Denial? Denise Pien. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations Thank for that. Thank you. So that's also, talk about right. the opportunity and challenge so of partnerships with that, that project. That was an incredible um, collaboration at the start. I mean, we really were excited about it. So we had, Phil Bennett was our managing editor at the time, and he had a very close relationship with Steve Feineru and Mark Feineru Rada, who were the reporters on the project. They continued, what people don't know is they continued throughout the entire collaboration, even through the breakup, and into the film. The reason being is that we actually started to work with them first. So we started to work with the authors of this book called League of Denial, and we loved them, and it was great. And then the potential of working with ESPN came up. So very quickly after we joined up with the reporters, we started to work with ESPN, and we had 15 incredible months, and we did nine incredible stories together. So Dwayne Bray was my counterpart there, and he's a great, um, just a terrific guy, and he ran outside the lines. And we broke the Junior Seo story together, all sorts of big stories together. And Frontline and ESPN worked really well together. I mean, I would say, um, looking back, they were probably one, one of the most gratifying collaborations that I've been involved with was with Outside the Lines at ESPN. I thought they were terrific partners. So when we were not able to like go through to the very end with them, it was of course disappointing. I mean, we were all disappointed, including Dwayne and everyone. We were just, we wanted to do this work together. But the most important thing is that Steve and Mark were still with us, so the film didn't suffer for it, right? I mean, the film was the film, and in fact, even as the film aired, ESPN ran clips of the film. So we, we ended up mending, in a, in a way, we were able to at least get attention for this really important film, which is the most important thing. But of course, nobody wanted to have to have a public breakup with ESPN. That was unfortunate. So the two authors of the book had yes. been employed by ESPN? Or what right. Was so they both worked for ESPN. And they, I think they were taking a leave of absence for a number of months. And so we started working with them right at the beginning of their leave. And then very quickly said, oh, well, you're ESPN. What about working with ESPN? We like the idea of it. We're really excited about it. Outside the line says amazing work. I mean, they just won the Peabody, right? They so, just won a DuPont as well in right, January. Yeah. Right, they did. I mean, so they do really solid investigative work. And in the, in the area of sports investigative journalism, there's very few people doing work anymore. So we really were excited at that potential. And we did great work together. In fact, Dwayne and I always say, the journalism that we did before League of Denial, right, together, that work that we did collaboratively was huge. And Mark and Steve were involved with all of that reporting. So they reported iteratively, right, through the year before we went on to the broadcast. So the work is there. That's the most important thing. So, so they were writing the book simultaneously? Yes, to right. Okay. So they were writing the book. They took a leave, but then they went back to work, and then they continued to write the book. I mean, it's a really amazing opus piece of work, right, that they did. And that's a tough, tough territory to report on the NFL. It's very tough, right? But then, And so, their reporting would appear on your air before appearing in their book? or we, Well, we it was a curious thing, right? So they were writing a book, and so sometimes th there were certain things that they would keep for the book that would stay in the book that we knew about that we would keep for the film as well. But a lot of the stories actually we would report on as we went, you know, and they felt that they needed to. And they had the, the need to actually publish in a competitive space, right? And Frontline likes to be competitive too, but we don't have the same competition. Like we're not a daily news organization, but certainly ESPN is. So they had to say, listen, this is so competitive. When we don't go with this, we're gonna get scooped. So they would go with it and they would own the story and we would own it with them. So it was, this has happened in these collaborations before where part of why our metabolism has changed is because our partners have to publish and we're saying okay we can publish with you now we're all living in the digital landscape now we can publish on our website it's a righteous space has great numbers let's do it doesn't matter the film isn't here yet and that's changed us and it's great i think it's a terrific change so interesting right. about on the collaborative front <laughs> who does what are the rules of engagement who's the decider that is the million dollar question so let me answer it like this, as easily as I can. So I don't think anyone is in charge, but I think you have to maintain being in charge of your own work. So we have very strict rules about Frontline's work. We ultimately oversee it.
Now, when we're working so closely with ProPublica, a place that we trust and we know the editors, and we're really working so closely, their reporter is our correspondent in the film, and their reporting is our film, and our reporting and our filmmaking is their work, it's hard to differentiate about like who's in control, but we're certainly in control of the actual documentary film and what goes on our website. And we feel the same way about their version of what goes on their website. So we give comments. We're very open with how we feel, but at the end of the day, the editorial vetting process has to be at the news organization where you're airing something or you're putting something online. So that's about as simple as I can explain it, that we're all in charge of our own bit of it, but that when it's working right, you listen to your colleague who's telling you, you know, you should be careful about that. When we're turning the rock over, over and over and over again, it's hard to know who made which decision, but you know you made a better decision, if that makes any sense. So. That, that's crucial to the success of these, is the trust between both the reporter and the producers, but also between the editors, you know, the people who are running the shows or the website or the newspaper or whatever digital property is being run. So if some amazing video turns up from your partner, you need right. to be able to vet or you need to yes, know the, absolutely. the origin of that. Anything that ever goes under Frontline's banner underneath our brand on our website, we vetted. We've independently vetted in a lot of cases. We've asked the tough question of our partners, and the same is true for them. The best ones are asking us questions about our journalism. So that's why I realized that's why collaborations are so great when they're amongst trusted editors, is that you're asking tougher and tougher and tougher questions so your journalism gets better. I mean, it's amazing. Some of the things we found in Law and Disorder or Postmortem or Rape in the Field, just by virtue of the conversation, and it's a difficult conversation sometimes. I mean, it's long and it's arduous, but it is worth it because at the end you're like, right, that's better than what we had a month ago. So it's complicated, but it's worth it.